All right, there we go. Good morning. The, the board has been in executive session discussing uh, matters that uh, contract, legal, personnel matters, et cetera, that um, are handled in executive session. So at this time, I'll call to reconvene the meeting. This is the uh, official part of the board meeting. Uh, first thing I do will be to uh, ask that we ratify the minutes. Does anybody have any changes or anything in the minutes that, uh, of our last meeting they would like to make? And if not, Carrie, you make a motion to approve the, the minutes. Make a motion to ratify the CSA Board of Directors meeting of March 21, 2023. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay. That's one we usually get a unanimous vote on. <laughs> um, the, the next item, and, and Sandra, if I skip something, let me know. I lost. Next item is the, the chair's remarks, and, and I'll be fairly brief. Um, first, I wish you all a good morning, and I wish all the mothers and sea pines a belated Mother's Day. I hope you had a happy and good time with your family, whether it was here or whether it was away. Um, as a reminder, quickly, uh, you, if you have any questions to submit this morning, send those to questions at csacpines.com. Um, we have some questions that have already come in, uh, pre-submitted as uh, alerted on the uh, our newsletter when the announcement of the meeting. But if you have questions that occur to you while we are in this meeting, just send them in and we will address those too. As you know, we are approaching the, the summer months. And so CSA is busy preparing for the additional services that will be necessary to handle the increase in our population um, during these months. Um, while the year has been fairly busy to date, and you will get that uh, some information on gate pass and stuff in, in, in during the meeting. But as you know, and those of you lived here, that we're within a week or two of being extremely busy. Now, being busy in sea pine means different things to different people. You know, they're, they're, we are a community that is, is has businesses, commercial properties, um, uh, full time residents, part time residents, and short time and short term rental business. Um, so there, there are those in our community who benefit from all of these businesses, and it's important to them that they have, you know, th this business. And there are those who feel imposed upon by the increase in traffic and, and the number of people. The lions coming in and out of sea pines, are, you know, it's going to be longer than, than it has been. For the, so if you've been upset by the lions in the last several months, be prepared to wait a little longer. Um, it, it's just an issue that uh, until it's dealt with on a level that is beyond CSA's ability to do by itself, that we're going to have to find a way to be a little bit more patient, go and leave a little bit earlier. And, uh, uh, and, and as I ride with my wife in the car and she tells me it's 10 minutes to get from you know, the back of the line to get to the circle, I have started when she's in the car putting my uh, stopwatch on and telling her the exact amount of time. So, it, and, it, but it does seem like a long time. We are people who like to be on the move. We are impatient to be standing around waiting. Um, for your information, uh, CSA has hired a second rules monitor and is uh, looking for another half time or has a half time, Sam will speak to that, to help deal with the um, uh, reports that you send in of violations of um, our, our rules and our standards. And, you know, in, so you continue doing that and you can uh, send those in and that site and information is also published on our newsletter, which by the way, let me mention something to you because um, I've had the occasion to go back on our website recently. And I decided I was gonna take the time instead of looking at just the one particular thing I was looking for to go through that website. If you're interested in knowing how the Sea Pines works and how the various entities in Sea Pines relate and what they do, um, it, you, you, you probably ought to take a half an hour and go through that website and just um, wander through it, click on different sections, and there's such a wealth of information in there 
And it would answer a lot of questions that uh, a lot of us, and particularly our newer property owners, um, would learn over a period of time. But, you know, if you have nothing else to do or you want to know, it's a great resource. I personally believe that the soul of mood, mood of a community is set by the people who live in that community. Uh, we're very fortunate in, in that our property owners are, are, are truly good people. They're intelligent and they're caring. In my short time as chair, I have been impressed not only by the interests of our property owners in our community, sometimes very intense, but that's okay. They are interested in the good and the welfare of our community. And they submit very intelligent and you know, reasonable alternatives. They go to a lot of trouble to present things to us and, 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 and that's good. There are things we may not know unless they get reported. We may not all agree on the same thing, but you know, that's normal. In, our, in a community, any community, there's no universal agreement. There are differences of opinions. Different people want different things. Different people don't like certain things. But it's important that we work for the common good the work for the common good of all of our community. And that means that we have to find a way to make things in Sea Pines work as best we can. We're not gonna achieve perfection. All we can do is try to improve and keep improving. For my part, the only thing I can promise you is I'll do my best to promote the common good in this community and to try to enhance our life in this community and make our life as happy as possible. Whether I accomplish that, I'm going to try. You know, but that's that's the only thing I can promise anyone. With that, I thank you, and we will move on to the more important part of the meeting and listen to me. The, the next thing will be the president's remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'll save most of our remarks for the time with the direct of uh, the. Uh, the directors and the, give their reports, the management reports. I will uh, brief the community that we, uh, in terms of searching for our safety and security director, we have uh, done our first round of interviews and five candidates have risen to the top of that list uh, by very qualified individuals. We are bringing those individuals back for a second round of interviews later this month. And then uh, hopefully after that, we'll be able to make a decision and someone will set themselves apart and we will make an offer and uh, get a new safety and security director in uh, to serve Sea Pines. I, I want to again thank Captain Greg Coleman and his team for all they've done. Uh, they've been doing a remarkable job uh, through uh, Toby's uh, absence and Greg has uh, really stepped up and much appreciated for his work. Uh, they did a tremendous job during the heritage and they're very prepared to move into the busy season as we uh, Look at the director's position. And I'll say my other remarks for later. Thank you, Sam. We'll now move to management reports. Russell, you're next. There we go. Can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? Yes, I can. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you. And uh, good morning, everyone. And um, just uh, keep my comments uh, brief this morning. I'm, provide a, a brief update on the uh, infrastructure projects that we have uh, going on, uh, on in the community. Firstly, as I um, want to thank the property owners for their ongoing patience and understanding as we work through these projects on Sea Pines Drive and uh, most recently Wagon Road. Uh, just providing a quick update on those areas. Uh, Wagon Road, we're finishing the uh, asphalt resurfacing today. Um, sea Pines Drive, uh, we have some uh, punch list items to work through, uh, roadway reflectors to install and some additional striping as well along the roadway uh, to install. Uh, but again, we're in the final stages of wrapping up and uh, with, those, with those infrastructure, uh, the drainage and roadway projects that have consumed the, the last couple months. Uh, also in that same uh, area, uh, proximity to Wagon Road is Timber Bridge number 24 that was recently completed. Uh, we've, received a lot of positive feedback on that project and uh, the new bridge uh, should last uh, quite a long time. So glad to see that project uh, come to com completion. Our beach boardwalks, uh, we uh, recently completed number 46 and number 43A. Uh, we're currently working on uh, number 45 and that will be completed by Memorial Day weekend. 
and then opened uh, back up. So uh, the beach boardwalks, as we know, are very important to uh, maintain those uh, dunes along the uh, the uh, beach trust area along Sea Pine. So again, those are those projects sort of uh, pay uh, big dividends uh, to keep those beach walks uh, um, in good good repair. Um, <clears throat> Uh, sea Pines Drive for the next stretch from Bain, from where we left off with our current project at Baynard Cove Road uh, to Land's End. Uh, we're currently working on engineering and surveying in that area and uh, teeing that project up uh, hopefully to begin this fall um, and likely will be completed in, in a couple phases uh, of that work. But again, that, that will include uh, drainage uh, as a primary goal of that project to improve the failing drainage uh, in those areas, as well as uh, resurfacing the roadway and uh, leisure trail as we've done uh, to date from Lighthouse Road to, to Banner Cove. Also uh, in the queue here this uh, summer will be the surveying of Harbortown, uh, the roads in Harbortown area uh, for future drainage improvements um, that include the Lighthouse Lane, um, Mizzamas Lane, uh, Windjammer um, and the subsequent streets in the Harbor Town area. Uh, most of that drainage uh, dates back to uh, the late 1950s, early 1960s, um, and is in need of desperate repair. And then the roadways uh, resurfacing as well. Uh, last comments for this morning uh, South Island PSD um, has been uh, working on installing the new water line. Uh, they completed the section from uh, Baynard Ruins to Lighthouse Road and uh, Plantation and are currently working on Plantation Drive up to the Lawn Stables area. Uh, they do have some uh, night work announced for this week, uh, some connections they need to make in the Greenwood Drive uh, area by, by the stables, um, but they are making good progress on that uh, and continuing to, to install those new water services as the old uh, lines that were in the ground again date back to uh, the early 1960s and were in uh, pretty rough shape. So those uh, conclude my comments this morning. Glad to take any questions and um, on that. Any questions? Anybody have any questions or questions? Okay. Thank you, Russell. We'll yes, sir. On. Jared, you want to talk about community maintenance and standard? Absolutely. How y'all doing today? Good. Good. Uh, I'm just going to keep it brief, going to go over a couple um, maintenance division updates since the last meeting. Uh, for our tree care division, um, the roadside trimming, uh, all of Club Course, we will have it done by the end of next week. Uh, it's approximately 22 streets they've done. Um, Lawton Woods, we just completed right before Club Course, which was about seven streets. Um, I believe it was two, two weeks ago, it was mid-April, uh, CSA staff did a deep cleanup of the Tower Beach restrooms. Um, that's something we're going to do on a quarterly basis. Uh, they're getting cleaned daily, but we're going in quarterly to do a deep clean, deep scrub on them. Um, our debris recycling crew has began filling in debris spots in club course, and they'll continue to work throughout the community uh, the rest of the season. Our roadside staff has continued to trim vegetation on leisure trails, open space, and beach walks, and has also mulled several open spaces throughout the community. Um, our stormwater maintenance and repairs, uh, pipe and catch base and cleaning. Uh, we've done Greenwood Forest, Planters Wood Drive, Spanish Moss, St. Andrews, Wood Ibis, Laughing Gall, Whistling Swan, and Oyster Catcher. Um, and ditch cleaning, we did a ditch on Governor's Road in Bateau, one behind Bateau and Oak Court, uh, St. Andrews Place. And we are currently working on a ditch near 75 Banner Cove Road. And again, these are all just since the last meeting we've had. Um, I did want to touch on the community standards. Um, in 2022, year to date, we had 185 violations. In 2023, CSA has issued approximately 420 violations to date. Um, so it's so almost double, a little over double. And 65% of those have already been closed. Of the 420 violations we've issued, there were only 22 that were second notices. So it looks like only about 5% of the violations had turned into second notice. Um, our community standards staff has begun working extended hours along with weekends to increase the coverage and visibility of the community. And I think in our stats, we're kind of seeing the proactiveness of their inspections and their hours. Um, that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman, and I'll take any questions at this time. 
Jared, let me add to your perception of something. Sure. Do you think the increased number of violations is because we have more uh, staff to, you know, in, in you know enforce them, or do you think the actual violations themselves have increased? I think it's more it's the additional staff. Um, we're being a lot more proactive. Uh, these these gentlemen are on a kind of like a quadrant basis where they're taking a day and they're going to one quadrant and they're inspecting the homes and the streets kind of on a proactive basis. You know, we still get, we still get calls and concerns that come in as well, but I'd say majority of our uh, violations are from our proactive inspections. Thank you. Yes, Any sir. questions of Jared? Okay. Seeing none, Amanda, communications, governance and planning. Good morning, board members. Good morning. Good uh, morning. Thank you so much for having me this morning. Thank you to those also who are joining on the live stream meeting and who watch this video at a later date. A couple of updates from the Sea Pines CSA Communications Department. We are beginning our push for our election season. So our upcoming um, elections information will be provided to the community towards the end of this month. The period for voting for our elections is November 1st through December 1st, and we will have three Class A residential board members uh, seats opening and one Class B commercial director seat opening as well. Those will become available on January 1st, 2024. Like I mentioned, be on the lookout later this month for applications and important deadlines in your email. Speaking of email, if you do not receive Seapine CSA's weekly updates, we'd love to be able to connect with you. You can reach out to our staff and provide your email address, and we'll get that in your inbox for you. David mentioned this a little earlier, but please feel free to check out our website. Lots of really helpful resources and information being provided there. That's seapinesliving.com. You can reach out to our staff for a request as well, seapinesliving.com forward slash request. If you'd like to connect with us, make a work order request, if you have a question, a very helpful resource there as well. And finally, if we can be of any assistance, you can come see us at the office. You can call us 843-671-1343, or you can email our general info inbox. It's info at csacpines.com. That's my update, David. Happy to take any questions from the board. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Thank you, Amanda. We go to finance and administration. Victoria. Good morning to everyone. I'm going to be brief this morning. Um, we are still trying to collect assessments in the finance department. We actually have um, a little over 200 that still have not remitted their 2022 critical infrastructure assessment, and just over a thousand property residential property owners still have not remitted their 2023 assessment. Late fees were assessed on May 1st, and another statement will go out. And then as of June 1st, we will begin suspending past privileges. So hopefully that will get everybody's attention. Um, again, the finance department is working on our rental registration program. We are ready to Ready, getting ready to invoice it over the next couple of days. So more information will come out about that in our weekly newsletter. And so be on the lookout for that. Again, it is, um, it is a fee that is based on the number of bedrooms advertised on your rental property. Finally, three, CSA 360 is coming along. We are, we are constantly updating it and responding to your comments and suggestions for improvements. In fact, we had one of the programmers here on site a couple of weeks ago to help us. Um, every module has been implemented with the exception of the rental registration, with its rental management, and we anticipate that being ready to launch right after Labor Day. That is my report, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you. you. Any questions? Okay, thank you for that. And now we'll go to operations and special projects. David Henderson. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just like to provide a couple uh, quick updates. Start with the Forest Preserve. The Forest Preserve had their spring fundraiser, the Party in the Pines, on Saturday, April 1st. It was forced to go inside due to weather 
And I'd just like to give a special thank you to the Salty Dog for hosting us, for scrambling to, to make the event possible due to the weather. Also, would like to thank the Sea Pines Resort and our other sponsors for making it uh, possible, as well as attendees. In spite of the weather, we had about 200 people that showed up for the event, and it was successful in a, in a great evening. So thank you for that. On the land management program for the Forest Preserve, we have completed year to date three prescribed burns. We were able to do two in March and one this past April. Uh, appreciate the community's uh, patience and grace with us. We do everything we can to minimize the amount of smoke, but depending on wind direction, uh, it's inevitable that some people may see or potentially smell smoke, um, but we do appreciate the patience. The burns were very successful. As we get through the spring and, and begin to get into summer, the temperatures and humidities go up, and so the opportunity for prescribed burning is diminishing. We'll continue to monitor the weather, we certainly need rain before we would consider any additional burns, uh, but we're definitely at the tail end of the season and uh, would hope perhaps later this year, certainly early next to continue that program. Uh, the final update I'd like to provide you is related to Six Oaks Cemetery. The cemetery has served Sea Pines since 1966. The existing developed portion of the cemetery is 6.74 acres and we are Nearing capacity, we are uh, beginning to work on a new expansion. It's uh, 1.3 acres. We're excited about it. We, uh, you may have seen some of the activity from Greenwood Drive, but that work is underway and is anticipated to be finished midsummer. Mr. Chair, that completes my report. Be happy to take any questions if anybody has any. Any questions? Well, thank you, David. Uh, Sam, you're going to take uh, a report for safety, security, and yeah. transportation. Yes, sir, I am. Uh, we are fully staffed at our gates. We are also fully staffed with our, our security officers, uh, except for the uh, additional security officers approved in this year's budget. We're in the process of hiring those. I think we've hired at two, two additional officers. We have four left to go. Again, Greg Coleman is doing a great job uh, bringing folks in and, and training them. Um, the the activity for, throughout for the first part of the year to date, we've had approximately 3,200 calls for service from the security group. Um, and that ranges from our wildlife calls to alarms, property damage, uh, it runs the gamut. And then we, our trolley system uh, did a great job during the heritage, uh, moving about 13,000 passengers. The beach trolley is up and running and it's been moving passengers on a regular basis. And the full trolley system goes back into service May the 26th. So uh, things are going full speed ahead. Happy to try and answer any questions you may have. Any questions? Thank you, Sam. Now we move into the financial reports. Uh, Victoria, are you gonna lead off? Yes, I will. In your packet are the financial statements for the first quarter of 2023. Um, I hope you've had a chance to look at them. I'm going to touch very briefly on some highlights. Um, first of all, on the balance sheet, you'll see that there's over 14 million in investments. And that is simply because we have cash coming in that I don't want to be sitting in the in the in the financial institution. We want to to be earning earning a little bit of money now that interest rates are are coming back up. Um, I talked about that receivable. It on this balance sheet, it's showing over four million. It is down to two million as of this morning. Next, Victoria, I'm gonna make a quick comment. Sure. I'm interrupt your train of thought. Um, with those investments, I, it's, I think it's important we let the community know that with the help of the finance committee and Leanne's leadership. We've made sure with the current banking challenges that are going on that all of those investments are uh, securitized and they are they are all well covered. And so we don't have any investments that would be in jeopardy should a bank or an institution uh, go the wrong way. Is that a fair statement, Leanne? Yes, it is. That's a great statement because the Finance Committee helps me um, almost every meeting. We do a review of the investments and their credit worthiness and our monitoring 
monitoring their activity and or their fluctuation of credit credit rating. And, and the investment policy is quite prescriptive as to not only credit rating, but the type of investment in case folks aren't aware. We're into fixed income direct holdings, corporate bonds, or fixed income funds. United States things. treasuries too, we're pretty heavy in those. So it's very, very conservative. Very, very safe. Um, going down into the fund balances, we have several designated fund balances. The one everyone's interested in is that critical infrastructure fund. I'm going to pull up a little part that I did. Okay. Um, and pulled up this little chart. So as you know, this board elected in 2021 once the referendum passed successfully to go ahead and begin spending that money, even though we were not able to invoice it. So there you see in 2021, 991,000 was spent on Sea Pines Drive and 396,000 was spent on that ditch clearing. We went into 2022, we were able to build that in October. And again, on Sea Pines Drive, we invested another 1.852 in Sea Pines. For 2023, we've got some heavy budgeted numbers for budgeted revenue of 4.25, with Sea Pines Drive finishing up at 6.256, a little bit of ditch clearing, and then a capital projects manager. So cumulative, assuming we spend all that budgeted money this year, we will have earned or collected 8.2 and spent about 9.6 with a deficit of 1.4 from the end of this year. Any questions on that piece? Anybody? Any questions? Okay. Um, moving on to the income statement. Um, something that's an interesting, interesting numbers. The daily gate pass revenue is up over budget, 187,000, and we're up over this time last year by 198,000. Interesting that the short term rental passes are down from budget, it's down from budget 15,000 and down almost 26,000 from where we were this time last year. Um, it's been my understanding that other communities are experiencing that decrease in short-term rental. The 2022 was just a complete record year for everyone. Our annual permits are up over budget almost 215,000. I'm, I'm anticipating that since our daily daily commercial pass rate increased effective January 1, that more of these commercial vendors are, are purchasing annual decals. Um, a big number is the repairs and replacements. It's budgeted as of March 31st of 3.9, but just because of the, the way the timing, we were only able to spend 800,000. And finally, at, at the bottom, under other income, it is finally nice to see a positive, unrealized gain in, a, in the value of our investments. It's been several years since I've seen that as a positive number, so I'm hoping that that will, that, that will continue on. That is my financial report. I will need a motion to accept this financial statement. Well, for that's it. Is there any questions first? Okay, motion um, to approve the financial statement. Larry, you had your hand up. You make the motion. Is there a second? Uh, second for uh, Jim Cassidy. Are we all in favor? Raise your hand. Any opposed? Okay, that passes. Thank you. All right, the, the next item on the agenda, still in financial. Um, I'll be taking both. You will take both? Yeah, okay. so okay. items B and C. So the Finance Committee, uh, one of its uh, core foundational responsibilities is to oversee the, you know, the operations of internal controls and to ensure that an audit gets conducted by external auditors on an annual basis. 
So the finance committee had um, two or three members uh, shoot off and create an audit subcommittee so that we could have the subcommittee uh, meet with the external audit partner, discuss the audit, go through the audit results with management in the room, and then have Victoria and her staff leave. I'm happy to say that the audit was clean. So it, it's a gold standard audit. There were no adjustments. And more importantly, there weren't any material weaknesses or significant deficiencies noted during the audit, which that has to do with the processes that are taking place and how management is carrying things out. So the auditors gave us um, high praise of the staff for the preparation, level of preparation, the quality of the preparation, and we're very pleased with how management did their part of the work. Um, there were no adjustments which is yet another um, very important indicator of the accuracy of the interim financial statements that management is preparing, as opposed to what gets um, audited by the external auditors. The audit committee um, was in agreement to accept the results of the audit and um, recommended to the finance committee to um, accept the results as well. I'm coming to the board uh, with two motions today. Uh, the first of which is uh, resolved that the CSA, Sea Pines Community Services Association associates, excuse me, accept the financial statements of the year ended December 31st, 2022, as audited, um, and report in the board of directors report that was attached in your package. Is there a second to that? So no second. Okay. Got it. Okay, Bob day. Gossett have his hand Bob, up. Bob, do you have your hand up or are you just voting? Where is I don't know. Bob and Ann have their hands up. Okay, Bob, you're, first. you're first. No. No? Okay. okay. Ann, did you have your hand up a minute ago? There was a flag. I'm voting. I'm voting okay. Okay, okay good. So uh any opposed? A okay, passage unanimously. Okay, you're still on. Okay. Um, the, the second um, item had more to do with just discussion. So it's not a motion, but the discussion that we met with the audit, auditors that their report is appended in the materials for the board. It is what we call the required communications from an auditor under the auditing standards. So it has an awful lot of words. Well, what I have just told you are the highlights and you want a lot of no answers in this report. No problems, no disagreements, no material weaknesses, et cetera. So we're very pleased with the report, pleased with the outcome of the audit. The financials are finalized on May 4th and uh, have been available uh, right after that. So that is the completion of my report on the audit and the 2022 financial statements. Okay. David, I, I would personally like to thank Victoria and her team for doing such an, an amazing job. Uh, they they do a tremendous job and to have uh, this type of work come out of uh, their group and the auditors recognizing it. Uh, I just want the community to know how fortunate we are to have Victoria doing the things she does with her team and the folks handling it. And I appreciate the finance committee. Uh, the, the finance committee is a great group. They're uh, exceptional men and women on there who are have years and years and years of experience, and generally Victoria is able to keep up with them, which is pretty pretty <laughs> impressive. They get her every once in a while, uh, but uh, I, I'm very appreciative of the level of work she does. Thank you, Thank you, and the entire finance committee, and I think I speak on behalf of the board actually to say that we very much appreciate your leadership and the teamwork that you have. We know your staff is lean. But get it done. So thank you. Well, I couldn't do it without the support of Sam and the Finance Committee. So thank you. Let, let me ask a question out of curiosity. Is the audit report published on our website or anything? That is a board of directors communication between the external auditors and the board. That is not published so, on the website. But our annual report with the uh, annual financials is published yes. on that. Episode. Yes, it will be. It'll be a link. Um, uh, to, to the audited financials. Yeah. Okay, good. Just in case anybody wants to know where to go, we're back on the website again. <laughs> okay, David, 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 yes. David, 
Yeah, yeah. If I may, if I may, I just want to add to what Sam and, and, and Leanne just mentioned, but uh, every once in a while you see questions on social media about uh, transparency to the public. The, the, the finance committee is made up of nine members of the public, uh, nine property owners who are not board members, have no particular attachment to the board. And they are as diligent in protecting the interests of the property, the community, as any can, any property owners can be. Uh, when you add the level of of expertise that our auditors have identified in our management, and then you add the outside influence of the the property owners on the finance committee, I, I hope the community appreciates just how diligent we are in making sure that their money is well spent, and and spent not appropriately but from what the board wants but then made sure it's handled correctly so it, it's a true it's it's really the the audit letters and the meetings uh with outsiders not board members uh, the the property owners who are on the finance committee should give the community great comfort in the way that our very now larger and larger budget budget is being used thank you Larry. remarkable well taken and thank you leanne too um we go next to unfinished business. Um, and and uh, let me mention um, two things that I didn't cover in my remarks. Is one, as of uh, on, on the ref referendum litigation, the appeal, our briefs were filed yesterday, a matter of public record. Uh, it was a joint brief of um, all of the uh, appellees. And uh, so, uh, that's the status of that as far as what we can, you know, report at this stage. Also, uh, on e-bikes, the board is still in discussions and and so forth on e-bikes, and uh, we will, board is meeting and um, spending an extremely amount of time to try to um, make a decision on how we proceed on e-bikes. Uh, with that, I have no unfinished business, so anybody else does, uh, we can bring it up here. Otherwise, I will move into new business. Okay, there are, I, I don't know if you look for it, but there is a resolution to approve um, amendment to the Sea Pines land use rules and regulations for residential property owners, long-term and short-term tenants. It's really the renaming of the rules and the resolution to do that is that um, um, well, it's a different order. Okay, here it is. The, the, it's resolved that Sea Pines Community Services Association, Inc., Board of Directors, as recommended by the Executive Committee, approves amendment to the Sea Pines land use rules and regulations for residential property owners, long-term and short-term tenants, to be renamed. The Sea Pines to be renamed as the Sea Pines Community Standards Rules and Regulations for Residential Property Owners, Long Term and Short Term Tenants, as presented. Uh, the purpose of that is that we are gathering all of our community rules and standards and trying to put them into um, one basic bucket. And it is the uh, place to where um, that will be whenever there are penalties on something or citations or need to be fines or, or whatever, it will all be gathered under that and governed by the various sections of the rules for the um, you know, for enforcement. And it makes it work better for everything being under that rather than just land use itself. So with that, I move that adoption of that resolution. Is there a second? Or any questions first? Anybody have any questions? Okay, second then. Second. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay, that passed. Then we move on to new business. Uh, that was the first item, actually, new business. That we have an encroachment agreement on Lands End Road that presented to you. It was sent to you um, for review. Uh, Sam, you want to verbally explain that? Yes, sir. I'm happy to do that. that at the end of South Dakota kind of Drive, the residential neighborhood of Lands End, which is a private neighborhood with private roads, is looking to make uh, significant landscape improvements and add an automated gate for uh, entry of their residents. They have asked us if they can have an encroachment uh, to allow for landscaping improvements on property that is owned by CSA 
as well as a meter box and um, as well as a uh, electrical line to get to the, the meter box uh, as necessary to put the, put the gate in. Um, and we, Russell Fredericks has worked extensively with uh, the Pumler Association at Land's End. We feel this is a very reasonable request. Uh, the, the landscape improvements they are looking to make down there are going to be significant and will certainly improve their entrance way. Uh, so uh, we were asking the board to ratify this separation agreement. Does anybody have any questions about this before we make a motion? Or oh, we actually should make the motion. Um, I move the uh, adoption of the resolution. It's actually 11B in your packet. Resolve that Community Services Association Inc. Board of Directors ratify the vote of on the approval of the encroachment agreement, Lands End Road 1, as evidenced by the as built survey, Nadinia Inc., DBA, Sea Pine, or Sea Island Land Survey Inc., Justin R. Kessel Ring, Professional Land Surveyor, April 30, 2023, into Sea Pine's uh, CSA open space as finalized by email. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments before we go to vote? Hear none. All in favor, raise your hand. Any opposed, do likewise. Um, there is in our packet, and I don't know, does this packet go to the, uh, it gets distributed on a packet site to the property owners? It's uh, certain information is put in there, depends on the information, David. Well, like this? Uh, the ARB updates applications, yes, they're out there on the ARB website. Okay. I just want to make sure that they're available to, um, you know, available to the members. Okay, do we have any questions, comments, anything anybody want to raise before we take a brief rest, recess to gather all new questions and so we can answer? Anybody with anything? Okay, let's recess for five minutes. I show 1045 on my watch. Let's come back at 1050. We need to and then we will, and, and to do that, we will first adjourn. So uh, I move, we adjourn. Second. All in favor, raise your hand. Any opposed, likewise. Okay, so we officially adjourn. We're in the question and answer session, which will start in five minutes.
All right, we can go back online. Are we open to the public, Stephen? Yes. Okay, thank you. We have several questions, uh, and so we're going to attempt to go down the order that they were received. The, the first question is from Philomena Wartell. Uh, and the basic question, since the addition of the 2.5 land use management resources, can you answer the following? How many initial warnings have been issued? How many subsequent warnings have been issued? What is the dollar amount of fines issued? And how much has actually been collected? In general, are the warnings issued the result of observed infractions by the uh, staff or the result of reported um, infractions? Sam, you want to address that? Yeah, and I could. Jared, is Jared still on the line? Yes. Jared, uh, you gave us a report for this year on the numbers. Remind me, remind the community of those again, please, for this year of infractions versus last year. It was 100 or 420 infractions this year so far. And last year was 187, I believe it was. For the same time periods. So, yeah, it was yep. so at that pace, we're already 250% ahead of where we were last year. And most of those infractions are being generated at this point by the land use monitors. I think you said that earlier in the meeting. Is that correct? Sure. Yep. Very good. Let me add on to that. In addition, Jared, you said that 65% of those have been closed this year and that there are 22 where they had to go to a second notice. Correct. Okay. Yep. And uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Ellis, just wanted to add. Um, 65% are closed, yes. And, you know, we're never going to have 100% closed because, you know, every single day we're putting more and more in. So there's always going to have some that are open. Okay. David, there's also a question of a dollar amount there for oh. fines. And um, uh, since July of 2021, we've issued approximately $23,000 in fines um, and collected uh, a little over $4,000 of fines understanding what happens is those fines continue to accumulate on properties that stay out of compliance. So uh, they're eventually what we do because the, we can't force someone to pay the fine, we'll go to court and we'll seek a judgment against the property owner and place a lien on the property um, for collection at the time the property is sold. So um, we have, but we had issued $23,000 worth of fines since this 2021. Thank you. The next question is from Emmett Burns it's regarding uh, a third gate access to Sea Pines. I asked him when there will be a third gate access for all full time property owners only. Uh, and, uh, you know, acknowledging the fact that there is um, a struggle at the circle approach in the main gate. And it, um, his recommendation is that a third gate in Sea Pines be established off Pope Avenue at Audubon Preserve Entrance. I think it means Palmetto Bay Road because that's where Audubon Preserve Entrance is and make this uh, unintended, uh, untended and electronic gate. Uh, the difficulty was that we do not own the property. It's owned by other parties. We have no control over it. We do not have the right of eminent domain and uh, it would go across several properties. Um, and that's been discussed off and on a series among property owners for various years. Um, so it's just beyond our control um, to do that. We do not have the power of the authority to, you know, to go across private land. The next question is from Leslie Casey and uh, uh, regarding a uh, building at 16 Indigo Lane. And it says, our neighbors would like to be informed when a new owner gets approval for their house. And we're concerned about the removal of trees and area on the lagoon. Um, and that uh, one piece of property on Indigo Lane had removed more than the approved trees. And ARB received their concern about the monster, uh, I guess, monster house being built at, uh, on Rice Lane. Uh, all of these are ARB controlled. And, and for your information, um, ARB is a separate entity. ARB is not under the control of CSA. They have their own rules and regulations. They come start with the covenants. 
and then moved into the time at which there were various mitigations and they were restated and the ARB is a um, standalone standing committee uh, that's vested with uh, the authority granted to it pursuant to the covenants and that legislation years ago. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the litigation was in the 1990s, but that's ARB and uh, that we have no control per se over ARB, I'm sorry. Next question is from Julie Clark on trash pickup, asking about why can't we have a common, I guess, community trash cycle pickup throughout sea pines. And, um, and I, I believe the question is, is that we have multiple carriers uh, coming in to the waste control and collecting garbage. Uh, the board, uh, to my memory, and, and it happened with uh, um, Kalimana and Panda, but the board, to my memory, uh, years ago, considered this and decided that it was not the way they wanted to go. Charlie, you may have been on the board at the time. Do you want to speak to it? Yeah, I was called the garbage man. Um, and at that point in time, Republic had the exclusive contract for all of Hilton Head. Um, Republic had underbid it and it was impossible for them to continue it. So they canceled and a whole bunch of companies came forward with proposals. Um, we looked at the idea of restricting those to just one or two or allow, um, allowing a, 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 some kind of restriction on the number of companies. We decided that wasn't possible and everybody kind of signed up. Um, at that point in time, I put out a memorandum to all residents of Sea Pines listing the prices that the various uh, companies had, and one company dominated the renewal. Since then, as new people are buy into the community, they just pick somebody out of the phone book or somebody they used to have, and that's beginning to deteriorate. Um, it might be worth some kind of a communication at some point in time that says, um, here are the existing, here are your available uh, waste uh, providers, and here are their standard prices. And let people decide. But my particular street, I would say that all but one house are on one single provider. And it works out better because they just come on one day, Thursday. Yep. And to that point, uh, I have heard a couple of communities that are down uh, in a short area have uh, the property owners themselves have gotten together and selected one um, operator to work in that area to make it simpler on their street. Um, but that's as much information as I guess we really have. David, is there any value in sending this question, thought, observation to the Medium Structure Maintenance Committee for just a a review or, or yeah, I think it would be a good idea to update whatever we feel on that. Yes. All right. The next question is from Patty Wilson on the road conditions on Otter Road and Fawn Lane. Um, and, and it says Club Course Otter Road and Fawn Lane are roads in desperate need of repairs and there are small rocks covering the road. It's not safe to walk on or drive. The roads were patched years ago, yet need new payment. When will this be addressed? Um, and there is a, a there is a list that they're going by to get to them, but Sam, you may want to speak to that. Well, I will, David. I think that the next three questions are also related. Why don't to that. go ahead? The same question. So, uh, Miss Beth Darlington has a similar question. Auto road needs needs uh, new auto road needs new roads. So does Fawn. Or patching loose rocks. Uh, one never knows what's going to get next. What they're going to, going to get next. Instead of mean little fixes, do it right. Pay attention to us. Uh, and then another question, how my husband and I are having bike riders and I'm home on our road. These conditions are not good at all. When do you plan on repaving? And then finally, uh, the last question, in view of all the facts, that, in the view of the fact that all of us pay the same amount, since the infrastructure, including the earmarked new assessment, I'm wondering when the attention will be given to the dreadful condition of our road and our road corridor. I realize that we're not an area prone to tourists since most of us are resident mm -hmm. owners. We all contribute to the fund and deserve the same attention to, as the tourist portals. So when we we're the Sims Committee, which are Capital Improvement Maintenance and Standards Committee, is actually working on going through 
our reserve study and identifying the roads outside of the primary roads that we've been focused on that we need to, to give attention to next. Uh, I, I don't want, I, I don't disagree with anything, any of the comments they've made as it relates to the condition of those roads. It's just a matter of having the resources and when we can program them to be done. Uh, the challenge with those roads, as well as Governor's Lane and Pine Island area roads, are the way they were built. Uh, we got a similar challenge in Harbor Town and around uh, Lighthouse Road and Lighthouse Lane. Uh, those roads are built with what's called an inverted crown. So instead of the water running away from the center of the road, it runs to the center of the road, and it makes it very challenging for, for repairing those roads. So in the Otter Road area, when we do that work, we are going to take have to take all of that drainage out of there and put new drainage in there. So uh, that's a long answer to the, to the question, but the, the answer will be that you will see us coming with a list of roads that we'll, be, we'll bring through the Sims Committee here in the next coming months. There, in addition to finishing Sea Pines Drive and Lighthouse Lane and Lighthouse Road, and uh, reckon, making recommendations to the, to the board through the Sims and the Finance Committee as it relates to revenues. Uh, and those roads are certainly going to be what roads that we give in due consideration as part of that because they do need, they absolutely do need repair. No question about it. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question is from Lisa Nevitt. It's concerning reflectors in yards and also um, the poles stuck along the front of people's yards with uh, wooden stakes similar to the golf course. Um, we contacted the land use management about multiple properties that had these reflectors. We're told that the new standard was under review by the ARB. And the question is, what is ARB's authority over CSA? ARB is a separate entity, as I explained a minute ago, with its own set of um, rules and regulations and governance, and it comes basically from the covenants. Uh, ARB, uh, C CSA has no authority in the area that was granted to the ARB. Uh, that was set up years and years ago, and it's, it, it would be it would take a referendum probably to unchange it because it does have covenant backing. Uh, what are ARB's concerns with the standard, and what will the standard be implemented in force? And and doesn't the uh, current document already prohibit the use of reflectors? All of those are ARB questions, and all I can tell you is to ask ARB and get your answer. Sam, you have anything you want to add to that? I will happily forward these questions to ARB and have them reach out with answers to Ms. Nevin. The next one is a question from Michael Floor on buses to Harbor Town. Why are we allowing American cruise lines to bus passengers into Harbor Town when the restaurants are so overcrowded that we residents can't even get in? If Sea Pines turn into another Key West? Well, that is an interesting question. Um, is I don't know the problem. I guess being addressed seems to be that the difficulty of getting reservations in the restaurants. Uh, I don't know so much as the bus coming into Sea Pines, but um, you know, you pay your fee and you're allowed to come in the gate. You know, we, we're basically a whole community in that respect. Uh, but the other thing is, all I can tell you about restaurants and getting reservations. My experience from the day I first came here, probably 30 years ago, during the summer, you better call and get your reservations maybe a week or 10 days in advance. And recently, during the slack season in March, we called to get a reservation at a restaurant. And it uh, 10 days out during March. Uh, I, I just, it's the nature of the way we have to work and, and what's going on. It may be help maybe the way they space it, but in any event, that's beyond our control um, to do anything about. David, I read into that question. He's concerned about the tour buses that are allowed coming into Harbor Town, and I assume into other parts of, of, uh, of Sea Pines. And, and they, are, we, are, are there any restrictions to the gate committee in, in allowing the, the tour buses through here? And how do they gain access? I they pay a fee. They pay a fee, just they like pay a fee and um, it's a, it's it, it allowed under the gate agreement. Yes. Yep. It, was, it would take a change in the gate agreement to, to not let it's it really, whether it's American Cruise Lines or American well, Airlines. There, well, there are several yeah. different yeah. companies that yeah. come in with these large yeah. buses. Yeah. They do, but you know the gate agreement controls that. So right. there were about there were three 
Now, I think one fell out, but it came down at two, but I don't know if it's changed now. Well, we've seen, I've seen personally a couple different ones in here, and they are the Lord's, Lord's buses. Yeah. We have no other questions. So with that, we will sign off for the day. We thank all of y'all who stayed with us. I imagine a lot of you dropped off during the time, but um, thank you anyway for participating in this.